So in this video, we're going to be talking about what we call upper respiratory tract infections in children. So that's your coughs, your colds, sore throats and ear infections. All these are really super common in kids and sometimes it's hard to know, even as a doctor, when to worry about your children, when can you keep them at home and just look after them or when do you need to seek help from a GP. So hopefully in this video we're going to run through uh, what those common cold symptoms are and the coughs and the sore throats and the ear infections, what you can do about them and when you do need to seek help. Worth bearing in mind that all the advice in this video is for babies and children over three months old. So if you've got a little one less than three months old, we always have a really low threshold for reviewing them. So if you're at all unsure, please do contact your GP. I'm not going to talk about COVID-19 in this video, but if your child does have any symptoms of COVID-19, which can include a fever, a new continuous cough or loss of taste and smell, then please do book them a PCR test and seek review if you're unsure if they're well. Fever. So our normal body temperature is around about 36.5 degrees centigrade and anything above 38 is considered a high temperature. You may not have a thermometer but you might just notice your child is hot and sweaty. And we naturally worry about our child having a fever but actually that's the body trying its best to kill off the bugs because those bugs can't survive as well in a high body temperature. So we don't necessarily need to panic about a high temperature if the child is otherwise well. If they're getting a bit distressed, then sometimes a bit of paracetamol such as Calpol can be like magic and make them feel much better. But the main thing is fluids, so make sure they're having plenty of fluids. Um, they might not feel like eating too much and that's alright if it's just for a day or two. But keep up the fluids. Don't worry too much about trying to sponge them down or strip their clothes off and alternatively don't coat them in too many blankets. Just keep them as you would normally. It's also worth bearing in mind there's something called a febrile seizure and this is when a child can have a fit associated with a high temperature and it's really really frightening for the parents um, but usually the child is fine afterwards um, but of course if you're concerned that your child is having a fit at all especially if it's lasting more than five minutes please do dial 999 but it's just worth bearing in mind that these things called febrile seizures exist. A common cold. So the common cold really is common and even healthy children get about eight colds in a year and this is because their immune system is learning all about these bugs and building their immune system so they can fight them off better in the future. Most common colds last about five to seven days and in younger children can last up to two weeks. And sometimes it seems like one long cold because they get, just before they've even got over one cold, they've got another one. So sometimes it can seem like one continuous cold. When children have colds, they often sound really chesty. And this is because they've got smaller airways than adults and they're not very good at clearing their throats. They also ha often have lots of green snot and you might be worried that this, does this green snot mean they need antibiotics? No, not necessarily. The colour green has no indication as to whether or not it's a bacterial or viral infection on what medication is needed. You might notice though that their coughing is worse at night and this is because that all that snot trickles down the back of their throat when they're laid down, tickles their throat and makes them cough. So generally, if your child is otherwise well with this cold and they are feeding well, eating, drinking, playing, active, happy as normal, then don't worry too much about this cold. You can try giving them some paracetamol if they get a bit distressed with it. Make sure you're giving them plenty of fluids. Um, you can get something from the pharmacy if they're a bit bunged up, for example, some saline drops. Um, but what we do know is that antibiotics don't usually help in these common colds at all. In fact, what they will do is uh, destroy their gut bacteria, which is where lots of the immune system is, um, give them some diarrhea, sometimes give them a rash, and it might reduce the efficacy of the antibiotics in the future because you can get resistance to antibiotics. So just because your child has a cold doesn't necessarily mean they need antibiotics. See how you get on at home if they're otherwise well. Croup. Now croup is known by its specific barking cough and so if your child is making a strange barking cough noise, a bit like a seal bark, and if they've got an, an unusual noise as they breathe in, which is known as stridor, then this could be croup. And we do treat croup by giving one or two doses of steroid. Uh, and it's quite common, especially in children under three years old. And they're usually fine after they have the steroid. Um, but if you're at all worried that your child is struggling with their breathing at all, then please seek urgent help. Sore throats. So in most cases, sore throats are caused by a viral infection and usually get better in just a few days. Sometimes there can be a bacterial infection, so if your child is complaining of a sore throat lasting more than four days, or they've got a high temperature, or they're generally under the weather, then do speak to your GP. 
In some rare instances, again, this can be a serious problem. So if your child is not able to even swallow their own saliva or not taking any fluids down, then you're best off getting them checked out probably in A&E. Ear infections. So these often follow a cold and they're usually viral. So antibiotics usually don't help at all. Um, what you can do at home is give them some paracetamol or ibuprofen if they're complaining of earache and you avoid the temptation to put anything in the ear like a cotton earbud. Sometimes a warm flannel on the ear can help. So the only time you need to speak to your GP is if it's been going on more than like three days or uh, if there's any fluid coming from the ear or if they're generally under the weather with it. But otherwise the ear infection is usually just viral and run their course. There are some signs that we do worry about that something more serious is going on. So if your child is very drowsy and not picking up with paracetamol, if they're showing any signs of difficulty breathing, so they might be sucking in between their ribs, breathing faster than normal, or just finding it difficult to breathe, they might have signs of dehydration. So if they've got dry nappies, they're not passing urine very often, they've got a dry mouth, and maybe they're not even got any tears. They could be pale or bluish around the lips. They might have cold hands and cold feet, but a warm body. Or they might have any signs of meningitis and this can include a stiff neck so they're struggling to put their chin on their chest they might have um, a rash that doesn't fade when you put like a glass on it uh, and they might be shying away from the light so if your child has any of these symptoms you do need to get checked out straight away you can try calling your gp you could call 111 or you might find it best to take them straight to a and e so key points i'd like you to remember all about all these coughs colds sore throats and ear infections the key thing to remember, number one, is that children are really resilient. They collect loads of bugs as they're building up their immune system and they can usually be managed at home and get better pretty quickly. So all they need is some cuddles, some fluids, maybe some paracetamol or ibuprofen and usually they'll be back to normal very quickly. Number two, don't necessarily panic about a fever if they're otherwise well, um, but you can try giving them some paracetamol or ibuprofen if they are distressed with it. Number three, remember that antibiotics only treat bacterial infections and most of these infections we've talked about today are viral infections so not only will antibiotics not help but they'll give some nasty side effects and can actually affect their immune system in the future so let's not all think that antibiotics are the key to sorting out these infections because really they're not at all number four children often go off their food whilst they're feeling a bit unwell and this often worries parents, you might be worried about it yourself, but actually, as long as they're drinking plenty, we doctors don't worry too much about how much they're eating, as long as it's just for a day or two. So keep an eye on how much they're drinking, keep an eye on how much they're weeing or how wet their nappies are, and that's the main thing we'd like to know about. Number five, the guidance suggests you shouldn't give paracetamol and ibuprofen at the same time but you can stagger them, which can help sometimes break it out through the day. Just make sure that you're not giving more than four doses of paracetamol and three doses of ibuprofen over 24 hours. Number six, the pharmacists are really good sources of information and they sometimes can give medication as well. Um, so if you're unsure, you can always go and see your pharmacist before you necessarily try and call your GP. And finally, number seven, all these infections, sore throat, coughs, colds, and ear infections are more common for children who are in a household where somebody's smoking. So please try and make sure that no one's smoking inside the house where your children are. And that's everything. So hopefully you've learned stuff and you might feel reassured when your child has any of these cough, colds, sore throats, ear infections, that they can be managed well at home, but you now you know what to look out for and when you might need to seek help from your GP or in rare instances from a and &E. I hope that helps. And I hope we have a nice quiet winter with not too many bugs. Thanks for watching. See you next time.